Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 25th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got two interesting uh, diaries uh, this weekend. First one by DDA looking at a phishing Word document that for a change did not contain any macros. DDA walks you through how to use his famous tools in order to first identify that there are no macros and then secondly identify the phishing URL embedded in the document. The big advantage here is these are all simple fast command line tools so running them takes literally no time and of course no danger here of actually opening a malicious document invert to figure out what it is doing. So for anybody here Having to analyze a lot of Word documents, uh, you got a quick step-by-step uh, plan here on how to deal with those documents. And do you own a streaming device? Well, probably everybody has some kind of uh, Roku, Plex, uh, Apple TV, or the like. Guy took a look at various scans looking for Roku devices and attempting to either get to confidential information or to look for exposed and vulnerable devices that could potentially be exploited. These devices should obviously never be exposed to the internet. And here I said it yet again. The problem here is often that an attacker essentially just wants to use your subscriptions in order to watch uh, TV shows. And of course, with uh, various uh, streaming services clamping down on a sharing of passwords, it may find you locked out of various uh, services yourself. Well, while we're still waiting for uh, the uh, Microsoft RPC vulnerability to be actually be exploited, we do have for you now even more proof of concept exploits for CVE 2022-21449. This is the elliptic curve DSA signature of vulnerability that I talked about last week. And well, on Friday, I mentioned that there is a proof of concept exploit that impersonated a web server. We now also have a proof of concept exploit that shows how this vulnerability can be used uh, to fake uh, JWT token of signatures. Again, this only affects Java 15 through 18. So most enterprises who are still way behind uh, are sort of lucky here for being slow in updating their Java JDKs. And of course, you're only vulnerable here if the software that parses the token is using one of the vulnerable Java versions. And IBM released updates for DB2. Now, typically, DB2 vulnerabilities don't really excite me uh, that much, uh, given that uh, I see it a little bit more as a niche database. But uh, yes, it's still in use. Uh, but uh, what sort of caught my attention here that IBM does fix uh, two vulnerabilities in XPAT. The two vulnerabilities were discovered back in January and patched in XPAT. And XPAT or LibXPAT is one of the few XML parsing libraries out there. So it's one of those classic supply chain issues showing up everywhere and nobody really paying much attention to it. The code goes back to the late 90s, I think it was one of the early XML parsing libraries as well. So not just DB2, but uh, double check that libxpat is up to date in your system on Linux systems. It usually uh, comes as part of your regular operating system updates. And then Atlassian also published an update for Jira. Sounds like something I may have mentioned last week, but I can't quite remember. And we have uh, 20 more seconds. So I figure I'll just uh, put out a reminder here. And also the advisory was updated on uh, Friday. So double check. It's an authentication bypass vulnerability. Well, and uh, this is it uh, for today. Thanks again for listening and uh, talk to you again tomorrow.